Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton and beyond. This week, Malaysia's men's doubles pair, Govi Shem and Tang Wee Kyung, talk to us as they tell us about their preparation for the Olympics. And we report on badminton at the 18th ASEAN University Games. in the Thomas Cup final. Great performance from the scratch pairing of Govi Shem and Tamwi Kiong. Although Japan were the eventual winners in a nail-biting Thomas Cup final in 2014, Malaysia's scratch pair of Tanwi Kiong and Govi Shem impressed many with their winning performances in India. The pair won all their matches in the competition, and against Japan, they displayed composure, tenacity, and skill to level scores for Malaysia and take the final to the fifth match. Considering that Tan and Go were only put together for the prestigious team event, their performance was noteworthy. The duo debuted as Malaysia's second doubles pairing at the Thomas Cup, but their imposing display in India had them pegged as the nation's best. We can feel the pressure that everybody looking at us, hoping and uh, on us to, to achieve something. So I can still remember the, the feeling. It's a very good experience for us lah, because uh, this Thomas Cup is a very big event for Malaysia. Badminton Unlimited visited the world number 12 pair at their training base in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. In pairing Go and Tan, the coaching team had to split two men's doubles partnerships that were already making their mark on the international stage. Govi Shem and Lim Kim Hwa were the 2014 Malaysia Open winners, bronze medalists at the 2011 Southeast Asian Games and the 2013 Badminton Asia Championships. While Tam Wee Kyung and Hun Tian Hao did not have major titles to show, they were still ranked number seven. It wasn't a simple decision to split these two pairs, but the gambit paid off. At the first, it's not easy because uh, he's a right-hander and my last partner is left-hander. After that, we more communication uh, that's become better. Uh, at the beginning, it's quite difficult because we cannot uh, get use of the game style. Time being, then become better. The pair's impressive exploits in India sealed the deal for Go and Tan. After their Thomas Cup feat, the then 25-year-olds won gold at the 2014 Commonwealth Games in Glasgow and were bronze medalists at the Asian Games the same year. But the pair struggled to maintain the performances, and with the Olympic qualification period kicking off in 2015, their dip in form did not bode well. And to put their qualifying campaign in further jeopardy, Former world number ones Ku Kien Kiet and Tan Bun Hyong threw their names in the ring when they reunited in a bid to qualify for their third Olympics. As each NOC is allowed two representatives only if both are ranked in the top eight, the race became more intense for Go and Tan. It's the first time for us facing this Olympics. A qualification is totally different feeling compared with normal tournament and it feels like very tight. So uh, the ranking helped help us a lot also. On a good day, Tan Wee Kyung and Go Vi Shem are capable of beating the best in the business. The likes of Korea's top pairs Lee Yong Dae and Yu Yeon Seong and Kim Ki Jung and Kim Sa Rang to China's Fu Hai Feng and Zhang Nan have all fallen to the Malaysian pair. Unfortunately, that level of performance does not happen as regularly as they would have liked. I just keep telling myself you have to focus and that's all we can do. Even that we are in no matter you in a good form or bad, bad luck or whatever, you have to focus. Things though started to pick up for the duo towards the end of 2015. And Tan and Go enjoyed a good stretch of results. Victory at the US Open in December, followed by a top of the podium finish at the Syed Modi International Badminton Championships this year, boosted the pair's qualification campaign. They reached the semi finals of the Yonex All England Open for the first time and, in the process, knocked out Ku and Tan in the quarter finals. It was a crucial result that saw them gain on their compatriots in the race to Rio rankings. 
I think the time is quite pressure. I think for everyone, especially us, point with Ku and Tan, very close, very tight, and we have to play against them as well. During that time, we play a good game, and it, the the pressure um, help us. Our journey to Rio, um, I think, is very tight. We have to finish all the tournament until the last tournament for the qualification period. We only know that we can qualify. Malaysia have one bronze and one silver in men's doubles from six editions of the Olympics. Rasif and Jalani Sidek won the first badminton medal for the nation in the 1992 Barcelona Games, while Chia Soon Kit and Yap Kim Hock grabbed silver in Atlanta 96. Since then, no male tandems have stood on the Olympic podium. Not easy to, to see the result. Everybody has a chance to win the medal. Just see the day of the performance. It won't be easy for the Malaysian pair in Brazil, but anything can happen at the Games. Tan Wee Kiong and Kovi Shem may not be podium favourites, but they will be hoping to spring a few surprises in Rio. I like to eat Gai Yek. I like to eat Kim Ban. I like Tan Wai Lam. I like the song Yang Tian Hua. I like to go to the city. Sometimes I like to go to the city. I don't have any special place. I like to go to the city, to go to the city, to go to the city. 林，唔係，我最中意林丹。我最中意黃晨。我最中意去東京行街。我最中意去首爾食燒肉。Time to test your badminton knowledge. In this week's trivia, we want you to name the only player to win two gold medals in the same Olympic Games. We'll reveal who this player is after the break. When we return, we speak to Spain Badminton Federation about the rise of the sport in the country. Visit our YouTube channel, badmintonworld.tv. There are tournament highlights, plays of the day, as well as past matches to savor. Missed an episode of Badminton Unlimited? Do not fret. All the episodes are available for your viewing pleasure. All the best badminton clips are just a click away. Before the break, we asked you to name the only player to win two gold medals in the same Olympic Games. The answer is Zhao Yunlei. At the 2012 London Olympic Games, the Chinese shuttler won gold in women's doubles with Tian Qing and mixed doubles with Chang Nan. She made history by becoming the first player in badminton history to achieve two Olympic golds in the same edition of the Summer Games. Zhao, however, is not in contention at repeating that feat as she will only be competing in the mixed doubles event in Rio. If the double specialist can defend her mixed doubles crown with Zhang Nan, she'll become the most successful player, male or female, in the Summer Games with three gold medals. When it comes to sports in Spain, football is king. It's the most popular sporting activity in the country and its people are among the most ardent football lovers in the world. So it's incredibly difficult for other sports to take the spotlight away from the country's national game. Despite its overwhelming presence in Spain, however, the country has begun to warm up to badminton thanks to the exploits of one woman, Carolina Marin. With two-time world champion blazing a trail on the global stage, 
badminton is slowly, but surely, making its presence felt in Spain. Carolina has been uh, our main driver, and uh, that means that uh, there are a lot of people who are having a lot of interest to know more about badminton, and particularly to try to play. So for us, for the development of uh, badminton in Spain, uh, the success of Carolina is uh, helping a lot. Yeah, definitely football is maybe the, the sport to follow in terms of attraction. But uh, I really believe that badminton has a lot of potential. It's a very spectacular sport and uh, it's a very fast sport. And I believe that people who play enjoy a lot and uh, they continue playing. The racket sport was in the public eye recently when Madrid hosted the Spanish International, a tournament that boasts a long history with the first competition held in 1974. The event uh, started in uh, Madrid, but then we moved to different cities. But the last uh, 12th edition of the event uh, has been organized here in, in Madrid. And uh, well, it's uh, a, lo a long uh, history and uh, we are very proud of uh, uh, the evolution of the, of the Spanish Open. We are now in the best uh, time of this tournament. Uh, when we started uh, it was um, a different level of tournament. Now we have an international challenge and we have a lot of uh, countries uh, which uh, are have participated in the last editions, particularly last year when we were part of the Olympic qualification. In its 29th edition, the Spanish International is the tournament for Spanish shuttlers, especially for those keen on gaining international exposure. And for up-and-coming talent, more often, it's where they get their first taste of foreign competition at the senior level. The Spanish International, also known as the Spanish Open here, is where we make our key assessments each year. We look at where our players stand compared to the international field and evaluate their performance. It's a good measure of where our players are compared to others at the international challenge level, so this tournament is very significant for us. The accolades of Marin on the global stage has spurred the growth of badminton in the country. And with her lofty but realistic ambitions of gold at the 2016 Rio Olympic Games, interest in the sport has also picked up across the nation. The, the last two uh, gold medals in the World Championships has been something very impressive, uh, particularly because he's uh, coming from a a country where badminton is not uh, quite famous, uh, but uh, we have been working very hard during the last 15 years to uh, achieve this uh, international result and to be ready for Rio and uh, hopefully we can really achieve uh, a medal and Carolina will uh, win uh, a medal and hopefully a gold medal in, in the Olympics, which will be fantastic for the future development of our sport. I'm sure that after that, if finally we achieve it, uh, badminton uh, will grow very, very fast. And while Spaniards keep a close eye on Marin during the Olympics this month, Spain Badminton Federation is already gearing up for the next major badminton event in the country. In November, the World Junior Mixed Team and Individual Championships will be held in Bilbao, and it's another golden opportunity for the sport to shine in Spain. Well, that's a really uh, a good opportunity for badminton in Spain again. It's uh, a, a new region as well where we are going to organize an international event. And it's really to see how the NES starts, the NES badminton international players uh, will be there. And uh, it's also a good opportunity for our badminton talented players to participate and hopefully to get a good uh, result. Bilbao is a city with high purchasing power, with big businesses and institutions that support sports because they know that sports is a way of generating exposure and money.
Thanks to badminton, they see the junior championships as an important opportunity to market the city and their brands to the world. Thus, having the event in Bilbao is great for us, as it's one of the few regions in Spain we have yet to develop badminton. And we want to leave a legacy in the north of Spain. We want to develop the sport there, as it's a very important Spanish territory with huge potential in their people and resources. These are exciting times for Spanish badminton. The sport is fast developing, and it won't be long before Spain produces another world-class star. For now, though, the nation waits expectantly for Carolina Marin to bring home Spain's first Olympic gold in badminton. Let's check out the buzz on social media about the Olympics. Great Britain's mixed doubles player Gabby Adcock tweeted this about her first experience at the Olympics opening ceremony. What an experience of a lifetime! Hashtag one team, hashtag honoured. Malaysia's Lee Chong Wei posted these photos on Twitter. A proud moment for the world number one as he led the Malaysia Olympic team in the Parade of Nations. Check out this post from Danish ace Victor Axelsson. A sweet badminton fan sent me this picture of a cake she made. Appreciate all your support. Even though I don't answer all your messages, I read and appreciate all of them. Hashtag thanks, hashtag motivated. Now that's what I call a super fan. Fans of Thailand's Ratchanok Intanon also took to social media to show their support on Twitter. The shuttler was the country's flag bearer and her fans commented, so beautiful. Dutch double shuttler Ifya Muskens shared on Twitter well wishes from her biggest fan, her grandmother. Thanks everyone for all the good luck wishes. Oh, well, isn't that a sweet one from Omar? World number one Carolina Marin looks all set for her first Olympic experience and tweets in Spanish, the adventure starts here. Get in touch with us on social media. Follow us on Twitter, tell us what you think of the latest news, or perhaps you just want to leave an encouraging post for your favorite player on Facebook. If you've got any comments or photos to share, do get connected with us on these social media platforms. Don't forget to include these hashtags in your posts during the Olympic period so everyone in the badminton community can find, follow, and contribute to the conversation. After the break, undergraduates from the Association of Southeast Asian Nations get together for badminton in the ASEAN University Games. For more information on the badminton competition at the Olympics, Log on to olympics.bwfbadminton.com, BWF's dedicated Olympics website. Read the latest news, get live scores, results, photos and information from the Rio 2016 Olympics. Keeping track of what's happening at the Summer Games has never been so easy. Although badminton continues to extend its reach worldwide, there's no question about the game's popularity in its traditional heartland of Southeast Asia. Two of the sports powerhouses, Indonesia and Malaysia, form the core of this region, and both nations have produced some of badminton's biggest stars. On the competitive calendar, the region lays claim to three BWF World Super Series tournaments, and at its multi-sport events, badminton consistently features in the roster. Latest to carry this proud tradition of including the shuttle game in its program is the ASEAN University Games. Badminton is one of the compulsory sports under the ASEAN University Games. Wherever the games move to, whichever country holds, badminton is one of the compulsory sports that must be organised. We do recognise that badminton is an important sport, especially we are amongst uh, some really uh, uh, powerhouse uh, in ASEAN countries, there are some powerhouse countries uh, amongst Asia or even the world. 
the Badminton Unlimited team recently stopped by the biennial sporting event at its latest installment in the island nation of Singapore. Eleven countries from the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, gathered in the Lion City to compete across 16 sporting disciplines. With a history spanning over 30 years, the ASEAN University Games, or AUG, has grown in size and stature since its first edition. The ASEAN University Games started in 1981, when a few countries uh, came together, I think about four, uh, Indonesia, Thailand, Singapore and Malaysia. Uh, and we wanted to have our university students compete at a higher level. So the first Games was held in 1981, courtesy of Thailand in Chiang Mai. So that was many years ago, and now this is the 18th edition of the ASEAN University Games. And we are, Singapore is proud to be hosting it. This will be the third time we're hosting it. Held at the SIM Sports Hall, the badminton tournament was well supported throughout the Games. Formats for both the team and individual competitions follow major international badminton championships, except for the inclusion of a playoff to determine the bronze medal winner. With the uh, venue management team and the technical officials, we have about uh, 60 over guys supporting this event for, for a six-day period of competition. Both men's and women's team is basically a round-robin format, qualification. And once they are ranked as uh, number one, two, three and four, uh, they actually play, uh, top two will play off for the gold medal and uh, three and four will play off for the bronze medals. Whereas for the individual events, it's just straightforward single elimination all the way. But you, unlike uh, normal badminton tournaments where you have uh, joined uh, bronze medalists, you have to play off for the bronze medal. Top class officiating and logistics are priorities for the organisers. It was only fitting that the expertise of the host country's badminton administrators was roped in to ensure standards were met. Yes, this is the ASEAN University Games, so uh, we sort of peg it to the SEA uh, Games level kind of standard. So as you can see, the equipment itself, it's all top class, top notch. And we're using uh, AS30 Speed uh, 3 shuttlecocks from Dionex, which is also quite a high quality uh, sports equipment. So it's almost as good as SEA Games level. We work with the local sports association. We have the Singapore Badminton Association and they have a technical officials committee. So most of these uh, major games, we just have to approach them and then they'll get the appointment done. And we'll work through the grassroots and we try to get the linesmen and all that. No, no problems at all. While the AUG offers young shuttlers a chance to measure their sporting talents against peers in the region, it's not all about who is the best on court. This is still a university educational program where our university athletes get to experience a high level of competition, uh, uh, but all because of the educational value of sports. Not just for winning itself, uh, but in sportsmanship as character development. Well, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I enjoy the ASEAN University State Game. So I can meet my friends, my Malaysia friends, Singapore, Indonesia, and many countries in ASEAN, right? The organization and facilities have been great. We're all driven to succeed, especially in badminton. Indonesia is known to be strong in this sport, so it gives us confidence to be champions. There's every reason to suggest that badminton will continue to be an integral part of future editions. Sport has a unique ability to bring people together. And once again, badminton has proven to be an excellent ambassador at this year's ASEAN University Games. Badminton is easy to make a new friends and if you have a racket, two racket and one shot to call, you also can play anywhere, uh, even you are in front of your house, on the road, or indoor stadium, many, many things you can find a new friend in badminton. So I love that. And we hope through the integration, we, move, we bring our university athletes from ASEAN closer together, and through that we bring the ASEAN community closer together. Before we go, let's see what the international circuit looks like as we check out the Badminton Unlimited calendar.
Next week, we have a special on Badminton Unlimited as we dedicate a whole episode to the extraordinary achievements of Denmark's men's team at the Total BWF Thomas and Uber Cup 2016. See you next week.